Okay, perfect. In the second half of the project, we focus on to complete some fields in order to do targeted changes for the hard and soft SLOs. We get the provided te template from GitLab with default values based on the previous execution from realization engine. You can see in the, on the left side of the screen that we have already auto-completed some fields. And based on this template, we have also auto-filled some values on the recommendation node and the classification node that can be used from the realization engine. So we have achieved to bridge the gap between the business analysis and the realization engine, and we can and we provide a tool for data scientists to define uh, hard and soft uh, SLOs. Uh, so I invoke, uh, I post this graph to the realization engine, and uh, I pass the floor to to Richard to present realization engine uh, component. Okay. You stop sharing screen and I will share. Yeah, of course. Are we showing, yeah, go back a bit to the, to the toolkit, to the toolkit. Okay, so we don't show anything regarding validation, I guess, and uh, do we show anything regarding the requirements? Petros, I, I yeah. see your screen, but I cannot hear you. Okay. Okay. Tell me. So, uh, we don't show anything about the graph validation, I guess. Okay. Yes. I'm just saying, guys, I'm just saying items that, uh, you know, reviewers could have seen in the deliverables and my task. Okay. Okay. So one thing uh, is the validation aspect. The second has to do with the requirements, you know, the soft and hard. Um, so these were my two comments here, you know, whether we saw something related to these two points or not. We have to to do something different. A recommendation. I don't know. What do you mean a recommendation? I mean, you know, if you are asked, um, yeah. how do you do, for example, validation? Do you have anything to show for validation? Not necessarily to show it that day. You know, to see it now, so we know. Is there any validation that uh, takes place in uh, in the toolkit? Uh, I thought that validation is guaranteed from process modeler, and we just defined uh, some metrics and some uh, information about the pods. Hmm. We have it under the toolkit in the reports. So just keep a note for that. Maybe I don't know to discuss it with Sophia and the rest of the guys there. Okay. And the second is about the requirements. So requirements you can set, right? Soft and hard. Okay. I will discuss it with Sophia. Okay. So remember the validation and the requirements and whether we show something or not on that. If you are asked. Richard, the floor is yours, I understand. Okay, yeah, I'm next. <clears throat> okay. So let me share. Can you see my screen okay? Yes, no, maybe? Yes, yes. Cool, okay. Um, so 
Um, so what we've just seen is, as with the ATOS worldwide use case, we've just seen how the data toolkit can go and register uh, an application with the realization engine. So if I was an application engineer, I can come into the realization UI, I could view the status of my application, you know, in this case, the GFT insurance services application that was just registered, and I could perform actions manually for this particular application. However, let's, we've already shown how um, the realization engine can be used to support um, the application engineer or a, a manager required to uh, maintain um, the app an application. But what happens if I'm a data scientist? So um, for imagine that maybe I'm a data scientist working for GFT and my boss comes to me and says, okay, we want you to improve the quality of the um, recommendations um, that are being served to our customers. So how can the realization engine and big data stack as a whole help that particular user? So in that scenario, if I'm a, a, da if I'm a, you know, a data scientist, I'm probably going to want to load up a Python notebook and I want to start building some new recommendation models um, for this particular use case. And so within the, the realization engine, I could do this. So um, I could deploy a notebook server for doing this and for the purposes of streamlining this demo, I've already done this. So I can see that for the application, I have an endpoint and um, for a notebook server that I've already set up and deployed using the realization engine. So if I just break open this over. Um, to this is really annoying. The fact that the web this web the WebEx just brings a title over the top, so I can't click any of the ah, go away, disappear WebEx. Uh, there we go. I finally can know yeah. that we don't see that. I mean, the bar that appears over there on you. I know. Well, the bar the mouse, is the top, that. so I can't click them. <laughs> yes, yes, I know. Uh, right, yes. Note to self add more um, fake tabs to the browser so it appears on the right hand side. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, so if I was a data scientist, then I would come in and I would have a notebook. So, so what do I need to do as a, a data scientist, right? Um, well, what I would want to be able to do is I'd want to be able to train new recommendation models. And so I might be doing tasks like looking at um, the different hyperparameters that are currently being set and seeing if I can find a new, more effective configuration um, that will improve the recommendation performance for our users. And to do that, I might what would be useful is if I could leverage um, the big data stack platform to perform the training of these new models, um, because that's a difficult and potentially time consuming process. And so that's what we're going to demonstrate here. So as with the, the previous examples that we've shown, um, we can define actions for a particular application that is registered with the realization engine. So um, during the, the, the creation of that application. So in this case, for the, the GFT um, services, we have already defined some actions that we can perform for the two main parts of that application. So for the insurance recommendation part and for the churn prediction service. In particular, we've defined actions for um, training a new recommender service, um, for launching an in instance of that service and also reloading an existing instance. So once I've found a good model, then I can go and push or update the current live production model. And within my notebook, I can call these particular actions using the Realization Engine's API. So instead of working um, using the, the graphical user interface we showed previously, we can instead directly communicate with the API for the realization engine within a notebook. And so I can easily define some just quick methods to go and do this because it's just a simple REST endpoint. And so we're going to be using um, four main methods here um, for this demonstration. We're going to be using the exec method. And what this does is it um, and basically executes an action. So one of these predefined actions that we have defined for this application. I'm going to be using the list objects endpoint, and that's going to get me a list of all of the current um, or, um, recommendation model process learning processes that I've run. I can also get information about the actual training process itself um, using the, the sequence templates um, accessor method. 
And the last thing we're going to be using is we're going to be using the querying me method to get information about metrics that are being exposed by the training runs as we're performing. So if I go down here, then like, so how would I train a model, right, for uh, this particular application? Well, what we've done is we've defined an action um, called train recommender. And what this does is it has three internal operations. So it's going to instantiate a new job object that's um, on our cluster or cloud environment. That's going to uh, represent the actual container that's going to do the training. We're going to set some parameters for that. And these might be your hyper parameters that you're wanting to try. And then we're going to apply that on the, the cluster itself so that you know, we actually start the training job running. And then we're going to wait until that training job is complete. This is a, a relatively simple action comprised of four operations. And if I wanted to see what that actually, that command actually looks like, I can use the get sequence template method to get a you new know, information about what's actually going to happen here. So we can see that we have these different operations that are going to be performed, which is just what I described here. And I can also see that this particular action has a set of configurable parameters or variables that can be set. So for example, I can set maybe the training max depth, you know, a number of samples for the leaf and splits for setting the, the number of estimators, right? And we might have a wide variety of types of parameters here for this type of test. So that's what I've talked about. Um, and so actually, if I just wanted to go and train an, an initial new recommendation model, this is as simple as just calling the action endpoint for um, starting that training process. So I can just click here. If I hit run for the cell, this is just going to call the exec start method for the train recommender action, giving it a predefined set of parameters. Um, so I can illustrate that by bringing this up. So actually, what we're going to do is I'm just going to get rid of the words. Away all of you. There we go. And so if I can go into my action states view, um, I can see here that we've now just started a new um, action here, which is train recommender, and it's working through the different stages. So it's currently waiting for that recommendation model to be complete. Um, so this will take a couple of moments for this particular uh, method to complete. If you were working with um, you know, a large data set, then this would probably take hours, you know, depending on the type of model, just for the purposes of having a demo that takes a short period of time. We're just using a small data sample. Uh, this will um, finish momentarily. And what I can do is inside my notebook, if I then want to get the performance of that particular model, um, then, well, first of all, I can check to see if it's complete or not. So, yep, the, the learning job just finished. So I can get that information. And then what I can do is I could just ask the realization engine to tell me what the performance is for the current models that have been trained. So I can do this using the, the query metric method. And what this does is it looks up the state information about all of the um, all of the jobs that I've previously run and gets back metric information. So if I just run this command, then this can give me information about you know, what's currently been run. And then I could graph that information. So I can see here that I've just run one learning job. I've got a single point in my space. So I know what performance that would be like given these different parameter settings. Now, I could manually go and reconfigure this and run this multiple times, but that wouldn't be very efficient of my time. So maybe what I would want to do is I'd want to maybe do a grid search to just try a large number of different parameter settings. And this is as simple as just reconfiguring the parameters and then just telling the realization engine to go and start a learning job for this. So I can just do this by running this cell. And what that is going to do is that's going to effectively you know, order the realization engine to go and start a large number of different training runs with different hyperparameter settings. Um, and I can go back to um, the, the realization engine here, and we can start to see that these are now appearing, right? So the just by single click in my notebook, I've gone and started, in this case, I think it's somewhere in the region of 10 different learning jobs. And these are all going to be running on the cluster um, to go and generate new um, performance uh, metrics. I think if we're doing this, I probably just do this as a video, because then I don't need to wait for this to finish. Um, because this doesn't take very long, but it still is a bit. Uh, still takes like a few minutes. Um, but yeah.
effectively at this point, I would just wait for, I would probably talk to you about the recommender service and wait for it to finish. And then I would say, okay, so we now have a set of new performance numbers from our different runs. So we got some more, yeah, we've got some more of these that finished. Um, and then I could um, you know, visualize the updated results. So I've now can see that it's starting to explore the space and generating me a new effective recommendation model. And then once I found the model that I am happy with, then I can simply tell the, the realization engine to go and reload this because I have a predefined action that enables me to you know, update the current live production model um, with the best recommendation model that I've found so far, um, which is simply this command here. Um, um, this one. Uh, I click this, this one. Um, so yeah, so that is now pushing an update of the the next, you know, the new best recommendation model um, to the live production server, um, providing better quality um, or yeah, effectively more effective performance for our end users. And with that, I will pass over where you can now see the, the application of that model in practice using um, the Big Data Stack UI.